report from Reuters, uh, the United States and North Korea will meet for the first time in Singapore on June the 12th. As many of you have probably already heard, three of the U.S. prisoners held in North Korea have been freed, and President Trump uh, did greet them last night, uh, somewhere around uh, 2 o'clock, I believe. And in response to that meeting, uh, President Trump said this, I think we have a very good chance of doing something very meaningful. The uh, proudest achievement will be, uh, this is part of it, when the uh, denuclearization of the entire peninsula is accomplished. This is a very big accomplishment for the president, and uh, I do it congratulating. President Trump has also gone on record to tell the uh, Iranian leadership that they better not restart their nuclear weapons program. Now, what happened in Syria to Iran after they uh, sent 20 or so missiles into Israel could be a big sign to Iran that they better straighten up. And of course, the Iranian regime resorted to burning the American flag and shouting, shouting chants of down with America. But I think they better wake up and realize that uh, this is not going to go very well for them if, in fact, they continue to try to build up a presence in Syria on Israel's northern border. And, you know, for their trouble, uh, you may have known this, but I believe the reports are saying that Israel hit 70 different targets and basically left uh, most of uh, Iranian or Iran's military infrastructure in Syria and it reduced it to rubble. On top of that, it's also being reported that Israel struck uh, the remaining amount of anti-aircraft uh, batteries that were that Syria owned. So they either have very few left or they were all destroyed. And if in fact that is true, that means that Israel rules the skies, not only in Israel, Lebanon, but also in Syria. And in the process of all of this, so Mr. Netanyahu has, has been in touch with Putin. And so far, Putin has asked uh, both Iran and Israel to show restraint, but he says he will not get involved. And here's a response from uh, one of the uh, Russian officials uh, reported by the Times of Israel. It says, we have established contacts with all the parties and we call for restraint from all parties. It's very worrying and a source of concern. We have to work to ease the tensions. The Israeli response said that uh, Thursday morning that it had set back Iranian military capabilities in Syria by many months with its strikes on Iranian positions. Now, the Israeli Defense Forces stressed that it was not seeking an escalation of hostilities with Tehran after some 20 rockets were fired at Israeli military bases by Iranian forces from southern Syria just after midnight, prompting the uh, extensive Israeli retaliate, retaliatory raids. Now, of course, the lies will continue. It says the Russian Defense Ministry claimed that Syria's air defenses had managed to shoot down more than half of the missiles fired by Israel. It said that the uh, Israeli strikes were conducted by 28 fighter jets. Well, they must have knocked these down before Israel completely destroyed them. But I have a hard time believing that's uh, even remotely true. But for what it's worth, it says IDF spokesman Jonathan Cornicus con confirmed Thursday that Israel had given Russia prior notice of its intentions to attack Syria via a deconflicting mechanism between the two countries that has been in place since 2015. On Wednesday, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu visited Russian President Vladimir Putin in Moscow. I told President Putin that it is our right and indeed our duty to take any steps required to safeguard our security interests, the Prime Minister told reporters in a phone, a telephone briefing from Moscow Airport minutes before taking off en route back to Tel Aviv. Netanyahu said he held or he had no reason to believe the Kremlin would try to limit Israel's freedom of operation in the region. An apparent reference to several alleged Israeli airstrikes against Iranian targets in Syria before last night's operation. And certainly there are other things that are going to be taking place. As we know, on May 14th, there is scheduled to be protests in the Gaza Strip. Also, it's it's been uh, rumored that the European Union is going to boycott the move from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem by the U.S. Embassy. And I suspect there will be, will be many other international boycotts and condemnations. 
that will be in order come May 14th. It's going to be interesting to see exactly how the world reacts. Now, I think that's much bigger, frankly, than what took place a couple of days ago with Israel attacking Iranian targets in Syria. Frankly, I think Iran learned a big lesson and suffered a very heavy blow to their uh, buildup in Syria. Now, will there be another attack? Well, that really, that's unknown. Frankly, I believe it's probably more likely that they will conduct any type of uh, future strikes against Israel through Hezbollah. And, you know, it's one thing I also uh, would be uh, keeping my eye on is that Israel said that if Iran strikes Israel, that they may assassinate uh, Mr. Uh, Bashar al-Assad. We'll have to wait and see if that actually happens. I doubt it will because I don't think this, the damage was significant enough in Israel in order to warrant that. Now, what do I see for the future in this area? Well, I don't necessarily see this as being the beginning of an escalation uh, that will prompt the um, Gog and Magog war. I do believe that war is coming. But I don't believe that Iran is going to be undertaking any more attacks on Israel without the help of Turkey or uh, Russia. But certainly that day is coming. The Bible says it is, and I have no question that it is going to be in our day and time. Now, as far as what will take place Monday, May the 14th, that is just another piece of the puzzle uh, of Zechariah 12.3, where it says that the whole world will come against Jerusalem. But in the end, the Lord will crush anyone who comes against Israel or Jerusalem to powder. So certainly I do not see this escalating into a major war. I'm still of the mind that we're going to see peace before we see war or should I say the Gog and Magog war. But certainly that's all in God's time and we'll have to wait and see what happens. And certainly if you don't know the Lord, today is the day of your salvation. You need to make that decision for Christ. You know, statistics say that 150,000 people will die today. The Bible says that the vast majority will end up in a burning hell. It doesn't have to be you. You can accept the Lord as Savior today. It's as simple as asking the Lord to save you, repenting of your sins, believing that he died for your sins and that he rose again, and that he has prepared a home in heaven for you. And I would certainly recommend that you make that decision for Christ today. And you that are Christians that are listening, I would recommend that you get a copy of my Tribulation Period Survival Guide. Get it in the hands of every lost friend and loved one that you can. There are two different versions you can purchase. One, uh, you can buy the paperback that will be an, uh, a ready-made guide for someone that you know who will end up going through the Tribulation Period. And you know, the first thing it tells you is that you need to come to the Lord as Savior. And then it provides information on what is to come how to survive, and what you need to do. Now, there's also a free version, which is a downloadable version that you can put on your tablet or on your phone or whatever the case may be. That is written in nine different languages. And I, if you just want the free book, then I'd recommend you get that. It's the same book either way. So I'd encourage you to get this today. I go down to the description section. That's where you can click on the link, and it'll take you to get either copy. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.